We are all ears. We want to make change at this university. A conversation with your new USG presidents. And so they've often been working on it for six months to a year. Student research showcase. And Buckeye baseball is in full swing. All that and more up next on Buckeye News Now. Welcome back everyone, I'm Rithika Shah. And I'm Ariana Bernard. You're watching Buckeye News Now. Mirror Lake safety, bike sharing, sexual assault, and mental health. These are just some of the issues undergraduate student government has focused on this year. To highlight all that's been done, USG held a year in review event Tuesday night where President Celia Wright spoke about what USG's done regarding these issues and more. Now the current administration has about a week left until newly elected President Abby Grossman and Vice President Abby Weidlich are set to take over. Wright said she's been helping with the transition. All right, inauguration's a week from now. That doesn't mean that our transition is done. It's a balance between being a helicopter, President Emeritus, and being there to help them, and I'll try to strike that balance. Uh, we've set up a lot of meetings to introduce the Abbeys to many of our university partners, and they've been received really, really well by those we've met with so far, and we have many more meetings to come. So I'll be going through that with them, um, updating them on our policy, and making sure we're aware of where they can find the most potential in advocacy, starting from where we've began, um, and also showing them how they can best advocate for the things that are important to them. As they are transitioning into their new roles as president and vice president of USG, Abby Grossman and Abby Wylek spoke to us earlier this week about what they hope to accomplish during their term and what they would like the student body to know about them. There are a lot of things around campus that can be improved, but the most important thing is to keep our students safe on and off campus. So we do have our four-point safety plan that we are working with administrators and talking with them already on how we can be ensuring safety um, for students on and off campus and ensuring that we are using um, the relationships that we have to maximize um, how we are working with these safety initiatives. And so, you know, to touch a little bit on that, one of those things is a first year um, safety course for all students, maybe incorporating those into residence halls, has been a discussion and topics of conversation with administrators. So, getting prevention out there, and so we're being preventative rather than reactionary and safety measures. Another thing, um, is working with local businesses on High Street to light up the back of um, their businesses to light up Pearl Street. So that's something that we're working on. One of the biggest things was this past year we initiated this on us campaign from the White House and carried it on to Ohio State. And it's going to be a continual effort through our entire administration. We did a big, big push for it last, um, I believe, October. And even this next upcoming month, it's um, Sexual Violence Awareness Month. So we're going to be pushing some more things out there for students to be able to realize what's, um, what their role is as a student and as a bystander and what resources they have if they fall victim to sexual assault. So if I were to say anything to the student body, it would definitely be that to come talk to us. We have, we have a USG office in the second floor of the, um, in the CSLS on the second floor of the union. Come talk to us. Abby and I will have an office right there. We want to hear from everyone. If anyone has a concern, you know, reach out to your student government. Reach out to Abby and I. Reach out to anyone you know in the student government. We are all ears. We want to make change at this university, but most importantly, we want to make the change that students want to see. Three undergraduate student government justices resigned from their positions last night. Justices Andrew Braun, Morgan Johnson, and Aaron Vaughn faced impeachment but resigned before the General Assembly could vote. Former Chief Justice Brandon Cruz resigned last week. The justices were accused of a failure to perform in line with their prescribed duties and of an abuse of power and position. And as promised, we've been following the developments in the debate over divestment. At tonight's USG General Assembly meeting, President Celia Wright said a special election will not be held regarding Issue 1. May session used to be free, but soon students will have to pay to take classes. Executive Vice President and Provost Joseph Steinmetz told The Lantern in a Tuesday interview that tuition will be charged for May session starting next spring. May session is a four-week term separate from the seven-week summer session. Students enrolled in May session are responsible for paying student fees, which total $46.75 this year for three credit hours. Without the tuition waiver, three credit hours for May session will cost about $1,190. Last year, a budget review committee issued a report that estimated an $11 million to $12 million revenue gain each year if students are charged for May session. Thousands of students visit Ohio State's 15 libraries every day, but do they know all about the resources OSU libraries provide? 
As part of a Lantern TV series profiling different characters around campus, multimedia editor Khalid Mualam takes us to Thompson Library. Students will take advantage of the people that are also in this space to help them. So um, we have student people at the reference desk, but there's also ways to get help uh, by phone or uh, an email or even hidden in our resources. Another, um, another way to get help from a, a real live person through chat and if you're in a research database, say academic search complete through EBSCO, um, there's a little chat window in the side, I think it's on the right side, where you can chat with some a live person who can help you with that. So I think that the people here are, are one of the untapped resources. Well, that's just a taste of our piece on Ohio State's library services. You can see the full story on the Scarlet Scoop starting Friday. Up next on Buckeye News Now. Find out what brought 620 OSU students to the RPAC on Tuesday. And a look at the Buckeye baseball season. Stay with us. Hundreds of Ohio State students presented more than 500 research posters at the 20th annual Denman Undergraduate Research Forum on Wednesday. Lantern TV reporter Amanda Vaughn spent the afternoon at the forum and brings you a taste of the many projects presented to the OSU community. On Wednesday afternoon, approximately 570 students gathered in the RPAC to present their undergraduate research at the 20th annual Denman Undergraduate Research Forum. This event is for students who have spent a lot of time doing a research project outside of class and it can be in any field. Uh, and so they've often been working on it for six months to a year outside of class. Um, so maybe in the summer or as independent study, something like that. So today at the Denman, I'm presenting my research that I've been working on for all year. Um, I'm personally looking at the quantifier word sum and seeing how kids perceive it and how adults perceive it in different contexts. I've been to this event as just um, someone looking at the posters and also now as a participant. And I think it's really cool to see all the different undergraduate research opportunities and different outlets that you can really start uh, getting out into the real world. Each participant presented their research to three different judges. The scores were then used to determine various awards, including about $20,000 in cash prizes and individual recognitions for each category. Well, uh, a lot of my friends are presenting here and I wanted to know more about the research. I mean, they tell me about their research like all the time, but I just wanted to see their posters because they put a lot of work into the research that they've done with each of their PIs. So I do research in pharmacy and so I wanted to see what other people's projects are and see if we can take any of those ideas and maybe incorporate that into my own project. For Lantern TV, I'm Amanda Vaughn. The Ohio State Athletic Department is looking into an Instagram post by redshirt senior quarterback Braxton Miller, according to an Ohio State spokesman who spoke with the Lantern. Take a look at this picture Miller posted to his Instagram account before removing it Wednesday morning. Miller is sitting at a table with products from a company called Advocare. According to its website, Advocare provides nutritional, weight management, sports performance, and skin care products. According to the Advocare NCAA recommendations page on its website, a student athlete may not use photos of themselves on an Advocare microsite, Facebook, Twitter, personal website, or any other place where Advocare is mentioned. But according to the Columbus Dispatch, Miller said all is good with the OSU Compliance Office. You can visit thelantern.com and click on sports for more on this story. The Buckeye baseball team showed its depth and balance on Wednesday night as they zapped the Akron Zips in a 9-4 victory at Bill Davis Stadium. Some of the highlights from the game were home runs by sophomore outfielder Ronnie Dawson and senior outfielder Pat Porter. Another standout from the night was from junior first baseman Zach Radcliffe, who went 2-3 for three at the plate. Head coach Greg Beal spoke to the media on Wednesday about preparing to take on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights for the first time on Friday at 3.05 p.m. in Piscataway, New Jersey. Yeah, you know, we got a four game winning streak and uh, we won opening weekend with Michigan State two, you know, two and one. So we're in a good spot in, in Big Ten play. It's very early, but we're in a good spot. We head to, to Piscataway to play Rutgers. Never been there. Excited about seeing a new campus in our conference. Um, but most importantly, we got to go take care of business and, and win a road series. Baseball season is often seen as a sign of spring, but don't put away your winter clothing just yet. While we've had some spring-like temperatures, with the snow still falling on Monday, winter seems like it just won't go away. Our meteorologist John Bangoff is here to tell us when we can expect some consistency here on campus. 
Earth can around. Unfortunately, much cooler conditions going to linger through this week and another roller coaster next week. Some rain and a few rumbles of thunder this morning. Give us a high about 44 degrees today. We're going to be cooling off as we head through the afternoon, dropping all the way to 26 degrees by tomorrow morning. A northwest wind at about 10 miles an hour. Going to make it feel even chillier. It's just going to be a downright cold weekend in store. High of only 38 degrees tomorrow. Mostly sunny skies, still quite a bit below average. Average high this time of year is in the 50s. Average low is right around 35 degrees. Brisk conditions for the day tomorrow. We drop all the way down to 20 degrees by Saturday morning, a chance for a few flurries by the time we hit Saturday morning and only getting up to 35 degrees for Saturday afternoon. Plenty of sunshine though, grab the sunglasses, grab the winter gear. Once again, these cold conditions are gonna stick around for a little while, 23 degrees by your Sunday morning and getting all the way up to a warm high of 48 degrees. Not really, but relatively speaking, slightly warmer gray skies, partly sunny throughout the day on Sunday and then Monday. We continue to warm all the way up to 53 degrees. That warming trend will continue through Wednesday with some more rain and then dropping back down into the 40s and 30s late next week. This is the roller coaster we get for spring. Stay warm this weekend. I'm meteorologist John Banghoff. Back to you guys in the studio. That's all we have for you this week on Buckeye News Now. Remember to like us on Facebook and to follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.